perhaps the best way to start with this is to talk about where we are in college football. And we're in a really interesting place and also kind of a preposterous place with the 12-team playoff coming into function later this year and a real big conversation about what the future of the sport is going to be. And I want to talk about that as it denotes the Pac-12, as it denotes Mountain West, and whatever college sports tomorrow thinks they're going to do. Let's start with this question, that uh, or story, not a question. So the body is having an argument about who should be in charge, okay? Naturally, the brain says, I do all the thinking. I should be in charge. Everybody knows this. What are you going to do if I'm not thinking for you? To which the heart says, that's preposterous. I send blood to all the places that matter, including you, brain. I should be the person that is 100% in charge. If I'm not pumping blood, the body doesn't function. To which the feet thought, y'all are all idiots. Because even if the brain's thinking and the heart is pumping blood, you're not going anywhere. If the feet don't carry you, you just can't get there. You're going to stay put, and you're going to sit there, and you're going to rot. Well, then the butthole spoke up, and the butthole said, I think, you know, I think I should be the guy that's leading the charge, head of the body, if you will. To which the heart, the brain, the feet, they all just laughed at the butthole. They, they said, hey, ain't no way in hell that the butthole is going to be in charge of the body. And the butthole, well, he took some offense to that and pouted, pinched, and he snapped shut. He, his, his feelings had been hurt. So after a couple of days of this with the heart and the feet and the brain still arguing about who should be in charge, well, the brain wasn't thinking so good. And... The heart wasn't doing too good a job of pumping blood throughout the body, and the feet were going nowhere because, well, the butthole had decided he was going to be a stopgap. He was pinched shut. You'd hurt his feelings. And after all this is done, we're getting at this point where brain is not feeling good. We're going a week into this. The heart is going, I can't continue to pump blood if I can't expel. And the feet are going, My, I'm so swollen, I can't even move here. I can't even think. Just goes to show, you ain't got to be smart. You ain't got to be passionate. You ain't even got to have any speed to be in charge. To be in charge, all you got to be is a butthole. And that's kind of where it feels like we are with college football because the folks that have some good sound opinions about what the sport should be aren't being listened to. And we're reaching a point in college football where, quiet as it is kept, everybody's compromising, okay? This is not a sport that really likes a tie. I mean, we have them, but we don't like them. Uh, we will, from time to time, have a national champ over here and a national champ over there, and we'll give that award out. But we don't like it. Most of the time, you or I are going to say, hey, 2004 Auburn, I'm sorry about you, but you're not the national champ, right? Meanwhile, we got this college football playoff that people were against when it got formed, but it became a thing that was okay because, well, we have a selection committee that is able to pick out the best four teams to play. And then in the final year of the four-team playoff, we have the kind of ignominy, the kind of stupidity, the kind of ridiculousness that everybody feared with the four-team playoff, which is you're going to have a team that by most metrics is going to be qualified for the college football playoff. They will have won a major conference championship, and they will be undefeated, and you'll leave them out. And we're going, that, that can't happen. The, the odds of something like that happening are nil. Well, no, they're not. There was a non-zero chance that it was going to happen, and it happened to Florida State. So while people are really dancing on Florida State's grade from 2023 based on what they're doing in 2024, one of the things that I was looking at is, Wait a second. Look at what we did. We still managed to mess this up. We still managed to mess this up because somebody decided to be a butthole and just not put Florida State in there, put Alabama in there. Well, RJ has a better game. That may be true, but you know what you're going to get now? You're going to get even worse games 
with the 12-team playoff while we get to a bona fide, unanimous national champion because we're going to have a tournament. So I'm taking a look at the playoff projections as I put them out. And one of the things that I wanted to point out about the playoff projections as I pointed them out is kind of how this is going to really become a problem in the not-too-distant future. I mean this year. So I did a top 25, and from my top 25, I have seeded 12 teams for the college football playoff. And this is a piece that you read on FoxSports.com. It's a piece that um, I think, depending on how you like, you know, you're going to keep doing it. But I thought it was a thought exercise that was worthwhile, especially as we get ready for not this week, which Slate of Games is not great, but next week, which Slate, Slate of Games is amazing. And we're going to start see some moving and shaking here. So allow me to just go through this right quick. For those of you that do not remember, the four highest ranked conference champions will be seeded one through four and will receive a first round bye. You know, the fifth conference champion will be seeded as it was you know, ranked or at number 12 if it, you know, was ranked outside of the top 12 teams. Non-conference champs ranked in the top four will be seeded beginning at number five, right? Then... The eight seeded teams, 5 through 12, will play a first round game with the higher seed hosting the lower seed, either on campus or at other sites designated by the higher seed institution. So, like, I don't know why you would do this, but if you are, say, James Madison and you want to have your game at wherever University of Virginia plays their games, or let's use, let's use a stadium that I actually know. Let, let's use. Florida, let's see, yeah, let's use Dope Campbell. They ain't going to be using it. You want to you wanna have your home game at Dope Campbell. You could do that, right, if the Dope Campbell would allow you in there, although I, I don't know that I would be that mean. So knowing all of that, take a look at the 12 seeds. And if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel. 111,000 subscribers as you got here. What I've come to find out is like 61% of the people that watch this show don't subscribe, so consider subscribing. At number 12, I got Boise State, which I think would be the highest-ranked group of five champion, one of those that would not get a first-round bye. At number five, I got Texas, who I think would finish as the SEC champion uh, based on Alabama being the number one overall seed, right? That game would feature Ashton Genty, who's on pace for 2,500 rush yards and 39 TDs. But, you know, we all think that Texas would stop a mud hole in Boise State and walk it dry if Texas got to host that home game, and I think that's actually the cool spot to be, and I'll explain why. A little bit later on. And then, taking a little bit further look down, at uh, number 8, I got Penn State, who I think would be, at, at least according to the rankings, the Big Ten Championship runner-up. And then ACC Championship runner-up would be number 9. That's Clemson. So that's your 8-9 matchup, which means Clemson would go to Beaver Stadium, which I got to tell you would be a lot of fun. And then the number 10 seed would be the University of... Oregon, who I would have playing against uh, number seven, Georgia. So Oregon would be going to Georgia uh, as one of the best of the 12 teams, right? A team that finished just outside of the Big Ten championship, but wasn't able to, you know, play in the championship game. So third best team in the Big Ten. And then they'd be playing against the third best team in the SEC, which right now feels like Georgia. So that'd be Oregon at Georgia. And then 11, I would have Michigan going to Tennessee, Michigan being, at least right now, the third best team in the Big Ten. These things are going to change. I'm certain of it because we got some outstanding games coming up. But it's a fun thought exercise to put through and to really try to see what this would look like and how this is going to go. The reason that I told you the butthole story is because it doesn't much matter that Alabama has the bye week and then they'll get Penn State or Clemson or that Ohio State has the bye week and then they will get Oregon or Georgia, or that Miami would have the bye week as ACC champ, and then they would get uh, Michigan or Tennessee. And then it does matter to me that Iowa State would have the bye week and probably get Texas because Texas, Boise State. Because if you look at the bracket, four versus five is probably going to happen because we do not expect Boise State or UNLV or Liberty to really be good enough to beat the number five seed, which is probably going to be Georgia or Texas at this point. That's how it's shaken out. Looking at the rest of the field, it certainly feels like I would rather be the number five team 
because I would be able to host the first ever playoff game at a home site in history against a team that I feel I'm probably going to be a three-touchdown favorite against. Think about what that means for your university, what that means for your legacy, and what it means to be able to put that kind of score on the board going into what will be a neutral site game, despite Iowa State at this point being the uh, four seed. Because that's what I'm really thinking about. Like, the Big 12 champion is probably going to be ranked number four here. We don't think that they're that good. However, Miami has shown us that they can lose to Vatek because they tried to, and then the officials gave it back to them. We're talking about the third best team in the ACC being Duke, who is undefeated, but still Duke. Okay? Second best team being Clemson. I don't know that I would want to be the four seed here, and I think that it would be worth talking out loud about whether or not the college football playoff selection committee will manipulate the seeds in their final ranking, so that this doesn't seem so out of whack and out of character. However, who would want to be the 7th seed or the 6th seed or, or even the 11th seed if they knew that these were going to be manipulated because these are things that we talk about. We put numbers next to teams and they mean something. That's why we rank them. But I, I'm curious about how we are getting to this place where I would really love the the butthole to unclench and to say, hey, look, if you are the number four seed or the number one seed or the number two seed or number three seed for number four seed, start with the number one and work way down. If you're Alabama, would you rather, again, we're playing would you rather like middle school, would you rather host Boise State at Bryant-Denny in a first-round playoff game and give up your bye week or you would have to wait on You'd have to wait on. <laughs> you would have to wait on the outcome of said game in eight nine, so that you could play Penn State or Clemson <laughs> on a neutral site. I, for one, I think I would pick playing the extra game because even if I am say Texas, I'm going to get the number four team off a of bye. Sure, but. After that, I'm getting everybody else off of a win where they had to play a game. So that bye week no longer matters because the bye week is only important for the week following. It's not important for the rest of the year, not as far as we're concerned because outcomes are outcomes and the labor on the body is the labor on the body. Recovering from a week of getting hit is different from recovering from a week or two weeks of getting hit. So there's there's that. I don't, I don't, I don't think that really people were giving this a lot of thought when they saw what these could look like, which is why we're doing the playoff projection right now.